So I'm actually going to start by importing a UV mapped mesh to paint. There's a hundred ways you could do it, but that's an easy way. And I'll select it here and we'll select the dress first and open. And I've set the texture width to 2048. That's just how I roll. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is, <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. It's coming in all gray. That's good. I'm going to rename this dress. And if you're not familiar with 3D Coat, I'll try and explain things as I go along, as this is a tutorial. Texture Editor. So you can see here, Texture Editor is basically a flat version of what we're seeing here. So if I was to choose a color oops, you know, and paint, I've just painted a nice shiny blob onto the dress. You can see it's gone on the front there. And the reason it's shiny and blobby is because I have both the depth and the glossy selected. So let's undo that. And now it's just the color. Okay. So that's kind of a key thing to remember are these little switches here. And it's fantastically easy once you get going because you want to work on gloss, you turn the gloss on. If you want to work on all three at once, you can have them all three at once. It's really, really super. Okay, next thing we want to do is bring in the figure so that we can actually see how the dress is going to work with it. So go back to File and then say Import Object. And this time we'll select the model. And I'm just going to leave everything at default because we're not really doing texturing here. Um, not sure why the color didn't come in, but all I can tell you right now is, oh, let's change the name of my dress. So let's delete all of these. And again, something I'm not sure of is what happens if you're using the basic version of 3D Coat, because obviously it doesn't support this many layers. But this is to do with the um, PBR shaders associated with this object, which is why she's shiny at the moment. So I'm just deleting those layers. Now I gotta be careful when I get actually looks. Looks like paint objects. There we go. So the dress and the body are separate. Okay, I'm going to lock the body. In fact, why don't we just see what happens if I try and color it. Uh, there's only one color layer at the moment. So if I lock the dress and try and paint the body, let's make a kind of a flesh color on here in the palette. And right click on that and say fill whole layer. Okay, so it's done just her. That's good. I'm going to leave the dress gray. And because the grid is kind of bisecting her like that, we don't really need to see that. So I'm going to go to View and just turn off Show 3D Grid. Okay. So what do we want to do? We want to give her a new dress from this dress. We want something a little more, less of what... Well, this is obviously like a summer dress, um, but let's say we want something that goes above the knees and not so, not so um, full, as it were. So a little better fitting dress, put it that way. Okay, so here we are with our paint objects. And now I'm gonna lock the body and unlock the dress. And which hopefully means if I create a new layer I actually th don't think these are somehow separated. Uh, you can select either of those swatches to color. and But the one in front is the active one, so if I hit the X key, just like on Photoshop, 
that swaps between them. So we choose the green and see what happens if I go fill whole layer. Okay, so it's just the dress, except that's a gaudy color. Um, in fact, I've loaded a Daphne image here, so I can choose that purple, except I just remembered something. Well, we can see that it works, but what I just remembered is, is the mesh we're going to look at has got a purple color to it, so that's not going to be very helpful. So let's um, change that for now to this, uh, this greenish color. Okay. And fill hole layer. There we go. Right. So this is where the fun begins. We want to bring this shirt, skirt, above the knees and less flowy. And how we do that is we don't go into sculpting because sculpting is going to alter the, the mesh, which we don't want to do. I can just hit the W key and you can see the, um, how the mesh is made. And because we want to be able to re-import the dress back into 3D Exchange, we can't actually change the number of polygons or do anything really extreme. All we can actually do is move them about. And the way you do that in 3D Co is in the tweak room. So once I'm in here, I've got some really basic tools like move. And like, like always in 3D Co, you can scale your brushes by the right mouse button and dragging on the object. If you do it off the object, that's your zoom. And so if I move this and I grab a piece of the skirt, you can see what it does. And it goes in the direction that you can see. So if I'm, if it's facing me, I can't pull it forward or backwards. It only goes side to side. So it's, it's screen direction. So, right. That's what we need to know. Um, there's other tools, which we won't get into at this point. We'll just show you the stages we're going to go through to actually accomplish what we want out of this tutorial, which is to change the shape of the dress. So one consideration is how do we, how do we get this skirt line to go up? If you start doing this, see what happens. This is not very pleasant and it's not going to work. Um, and then also, how do we get the wrinkles out of it? Well, the easiest way to do that, I'm going to first change the view to orthographic so that we're looking straight on. And let me just see. Okay, so our crotch is up at around here. So we've got quite a range of skirt to shift. And the easiest way to do that is to use the selection tool. And what that allows us to do is choose things with either the brush. So I'm brushing a selection area here, which we don't want, or gradient. And now the gradient seems a lot more useful. Now the thing to remember is the gradient has to be on the geometry. So when I let, when I click the second point, it's set a gradient and it's kind of hard to see, but where it's at the very bottom here is where it's the strongest and it's gray. And then it goes purple and then it fades to this black color here. And then I can choose move tool, which is exactly what you would think it is. And I can move with the arrows, everything all in one go. And I could even swap to the scale tool and just maybe scale up as well, which brings the polygons closer together evenly. And then I can use the move tool again. Say, let's say that's short enough. So I'll just close that. That's looking good. Okay, so to deselect it, you just click on another tool. And as you can see, it's crunched up all these polygons into tighter positions. 
and then of course we have all these um, flowy bits that have been nicely sculpted in there but we don't really want and really the easiest way to solve that is to select the smooth brush and as we go around smoothing you'll see what happens actually let's increase the strength it's sort of um, it averages out the polygon shapes so I can make it even bigger if I want which means that anything that's kind of stretched further gets brought in tighter so that everything's a little more evenly spaced and so far it's doing a pretty good job of um, removing these So then really what we do is a combination of the move tool and the smooth tool. Um, I'm going to put symmetry on. You hit the S key and then choose X axis so the symmetry is going left to right like that. And with the move tool selected if I just bring in curves bit by bit let me size the brush a bit there oops don't want to go too detailed because then you're creating new um, okay let's swap back to smooth and this works in um, symmetry as well and you can see your legs are breaking through a bit there. That's okay, because we'll just move them accordingly. Okay, so that dress is fitting a lot more like we want it to. So if I get the Move tool, I need to select. You can't select through the underlying geometry. You have to select just above it, like that. And you may want to give just a little extra room. I'm going to keep smoothing a bit, though. Now, the other tools that are really useful here is uh, Smudge and Shift, which I really don't know the difference. In fact, their icons are exactly the same. Um, what they do is allow you to shift the polys based on their normals. So it means that as you're shifting it, um, hang on, no, is it the normals? Which is this one? Oh yeah, no, smudge and shift are a little different. This one follows the normal, so as I smudge things around, it's not, it's not like the move tool where you're going to pull, see the move tool, if I pull here, see what happens? So I may want a bit of that, but then shift tool you actually can shift things forward and back without a huge bump appearing there. So you kind of need to work in a way. Okay, let's turn off symmetry. Well, this point, um, the visual part of it, I can leave it on. And we'll use smooth again. Okay, there's one little bit there. Let's pull that out. And if you want, you can check your other angles and just make a few adjustments. That makes sense. Okay, one last little smooth. Now let's turn off the wireframe and hit the W key. That looks pretty good. A little more fitting. 
I can all, I can see this needs a bit of smoothing here. I don't have my smoothing set very high. If you see when I actually no, I just uh, um, again right mouse button that increases it, that decreases it. I have like a second smoothing setting by holding the shift key, so it's a little less. Right. Okay. Let's say that's good enough. That's what we want. And go back to the paint room. Although we could texture this now, let's just export the dress to make sure it's worked. And I'm actually going to play it safe by going to the paint objects and deleting the body. Just to make sure they haven't decided they're all one object now. And I can turn these off. Okay. So there's our dress. And what we do is we go to File, Export Objects and Textures, and call it, let's call it um, this 3D Coat Daphne Dress Demo. Yes, replace it. And we won't export any color at this stage. We just want the geometry. So I hit OK. And I think it's already done. Back in 3D Exchange is the moment of truth. Let's select the dress item and go down here to replace mesh. And we get our 3D coat Daphne dress demo open. Okay, and there you go. And the good news is this will still um, keep the dress properties, uh, you know, the um, physics properties, because all we've done is changed, like the actual um, weight maps that go with it, get shrunk along with the dress because they're attached to the UVs and the UVs are stayed the same. You may want to change the uh, fabric so that it's a little more a little stiffer fabric, but um, essentially that's it. Okay, I hope this has been useful. Until the next one.